Hello there. As you can see, we're not in my workshop today. And that's because we have access to uh, an old house that is going to be demolished. And today we will check out um, the attic and see if we can find some stuff to make a guitar out of. Interesting. This could definitely be a guitar body. Some old sheet of plastic here. Maybe that's useful. Could be pick guards, for example. I was hoping to find some like uh, big, uh, big solid beams like this one. And it looks to be fairly um, fine grain. This might even hold a neck or two. If I can get it out. <laughs> yeah, this looks fairly smooth. Part of an old roofing structure, I suppose. There's some joinery here. Maybe that's interesting as well. I'll need to clean it up and have a look. All right, we're back in the workshop now and we have some of the stuff we found here. And now it's time to take a look and see if we can make a guitar out of this. So let's have a look. First of all, oh, this heavy beam. This was some part of, um, of the attic itself for sure. If I look at this joinery here. But those are those might be good for other parts, but maybe not for the guitar body. I think this one here looks interesting for the body. Maybe we should take a look at this first. Oh. Alright. So this is the shape we're trying to get. This is the model tilt, the tilt I call it. And now it's a matter of finding a good piece of timber to use. Okay, I'll clean up the dust a little bit here. And I like to start off by just roughly marking the big defects like knots, little damages and holes and stuff, so I can see where the usable parts are. There's a knot here, small knot. Ah, couple of Not here. Whatever this is. But this seems to be shallow. Maybe I can just plane that off. We'll see. But the point is to find a usable space like this one where I can get probably not the full body. It's too narrow for that but hopefully like half a body 
so I can get a two-piece body in the end. And this looks pretty promising from the get-go. Maybe even a part like that could be used if I flip it around. Let's turn it around. And there's going to be a bunch more stuff here. There's a check. A little crack here. Okay, so first of all, this looks horrible. <laughs> Lots of knots in the piece. And maybe it's not possible to always avoid all of them, but I will try like to get the best cuts out of this piece here, because if at all possible, I want um, like a clear piece for the body. A knot wouldn't be a massive problem most likely, but if I can, I will try to avoid it. So now I'm going to check just with the length of the body I'm going to need. I think this is a nice piece. Counter check at the bottom. This is clear. So I'm just gonna like roughly mark where the defects are on the side. And I know I have my first cut. You know, I can cut or like just roughly around here, roughly here. This piece here could be the first piece for the body. And now we need a second one. Just a little bit too short for the top. This could be like the bottom half. Maybe this could be the top half here. Certainly long enough. start cutting. We even found some other interesting things, like even old tools. This fun old C-clamp here, maybe that can be useful, I don't know. Old spirit level, super worn, but it's like Adler. <laughs> nice. And let's have a look here. Mystery box. See if I can open this even. Just because I thought it looked funny, this old suitcase here. What do we have? We have, uh, I don't know, what's that? Some, some sort of bag or something. Hmm. Doesn't look like a treasure to me. More bags. More bags. Old shopping net or something, shopping bag. Nice. What's more useful um, is probably this here. We found some old plastic sheeting. I don't know what plastic exactly, some, some sort of ABS or something, some nylon. Maybe that could be useful for something. Pretty thick, maybe it could be like a pick guard. This one looks super cool an old sheet of um, phenolic plastic. I guess it's the kind of stuff where they laminate many sheets of paper together. So, so, um, I think this is similar to Bakelite or something. Let's see if we can clean this a little bit. But it definitely has like an interesting pattern here. To get close, it has like, almost looks like a tortoise shell or something. Maybe this could be a cool um, pickard material. Definitely feels strong.
Ja, bye. Just like that. So now we have our two um, body halves here. And in order to glue them together, just like that, of course, we can glue them like this. We need a clean joint surface here, and it has to be flat and square. And we're going to do that by using hand planes. Okay, so now we have the two plane surfaces here and we're checking if we're really straight and we check against the light. So this is pretty close up here. There's a little bit of light. The one behind that is worse. There's lots of light here. So that means we have to take off material on the ends to make it really straight. checking for final time to see if I can see any light through the joint but right now this looks pretty good and I think I think we can glue this together now need a good amount of glue for this I will add a tiny little bit of salt to this. I know this is controversial, but I, I used it many times and I never had any issues with it. But it helps um, to minimize the slippage between the pieces. Just a few grains of salt is all you need. And it will keep the pieces in alignment nicely. Like that. Now on with the second piece. And we get a nice bit of glue squeeze out here. This means we have even compression. Okay. And now because the second clamp is a little bit too tall for my ceiling, I have to take this out of the vise. Thank you. 
so this is the tilt number 22. All right, the glue had time to set overnight and now we can have a look. So, oh, let's get the clamps off. solid to me. Of course we want a flat surface in the end and as you can see right now this is totally crooked. So to get it level we'll start off with a hand plane that has a special um, curved blade in here like a roughing plane and this will remove lots of material very quickly just to get it close to flat and then we can go finer and finer Okay, so this first surface here is relatively close to plane now. As you can see, there are still some defects. I think this is about like 90% flat. And in contrast to the original, like to the back, you can really see how cupped the boards were and how straight we got it. And now it's time to do the same thing to the other side before we can start refining it to the final thickness. So I just did the first few strokes with uh, the rough plane and you can see pretty well how the plane actually works here because you remove um, the, the dark coloring of the wood. So you can see I take off the high spots. So this is like basically like a hill and a valley and I take off the, the hills first of all and the valleys remain until the end so you can really see where the high spots were and where the low spots still are. Hmm. Oh no, I thought there was a bug in there, but apparently not. It's just a just a knot or something. Okay, let's see if this works. Wow, 
Never tried this before, but it really highlights the high spots. I mean, that's a cool idea. <laughs> I like it. All right, so we're, I think, like 90% 90 there. We are relatively close to final thickness and the surface is pretty plain and smooth and parallel to each other. I think it's time to cut out the guitar shape. Now we just finished routing the shape of the body and the next step will be to cut the cavities in here where all the electronics will go. So here we have the guitar body right now and although it almost looks like a finished body there's still some more steps to do and we just sanded the perimeter here to clean up the last traces of the routing. There will obviously be some roundovers here to make it more comfortable and most importantly we'll have to do um, the, the neck pocket but in order to do that we have to um, work on the neck first of all to fit it. So we will set the body aside from now and come back later and work on the next project. There's one more piece required I want to make for the body before we put it aside. And that is obviously the pickguard or scratch plate, whatever you want to call it. This is just the template for now. But I think I want to use this sheet of old plastic we found in the attic. Yeah, so let's clean it up and have a look. Yeah, look at that. This is some really ancient kind of plastic laminate. I think it might be like paper, paper in resin or something. Maybe even cotton in resin. Definitely phenolic or something, you can really smell it. It smells like when you open up an old radio or something that's like old electronics smell. Wow. Okay, let's check the back. Just roughly mark it on there, just to see what it would look like.
I did the last uh, steps on the pick guard off camera. That means I just polish it up to a nice shine, added a little bevel to the outside edge here, as well as put some chamfers on the installation holes. So we can uh, look at installing the electronics now. First step will be to apply some shielding tape to the back. That is almost sticking too well. <laughs> ah, sticking to my fingers here. All the good stuff here. And now that we have the tape um, on there, we can take a look at the components. I have them laid out here. So what we get is obviously um, the output jack. There will be a toggle switch because our, of course, it's just a single pickup, but it will have two coils you can switch between. Then we opted to go for a kill switch to do stuttering effects, a volume and a tone control, the knobs, and of course a capacitor for the tone control. So pretty basic, right? Let's install them. The tone pot still has this little positioning finger here, I'm not using it, so I'm just gonna break it off. Simple as that. Get the washers off. Put it in the right spot. And finally, the toggle switch here. This has like a secondary nut to adjust the, the depth here. Depth. It's not enough, so I'll lower it down a little bit again. I could come up a little bit more. Line it up roughly, and that's how we want it. Toggle, kill switch, volume tone, output. As simple as that. Maybe the ring here is a little bit. Other than that, we're ready to solder.
So this should be all the connections made. I hope I didn't miss anything. Um, we'll find out later when the pickup is done, we can put it in and then we can test it. But for now, at this state, I will put it aside. Yeah, electronics, done.